Overlord First Strike is a custom level pack and gameplay modification project for the 2018 video game Overlord, which is not only the spiritual successor to the Descent games, but was also made by the original Descent developers. The aim of this project has been to recreate and somewhat modernize the classic Descent First Strike campaign in Overload. It is however worth pointing out that this level pack is not just a one-to-one -one copy paste of Descent and actually contains several key changes. In this video I will explain the general design philosophy, many changes and the reasoning behind them. First and foremost, probably the biggest change in this level pack is the actual redesigning of the original levels. Every single level was rebuilt from scratch. This was done for a number of reasons. First, the altering of the scale of the levels. While we had the option to import the original descent level geometry, the actual scale of the levels doesn't translate perfectly to overload. It's also worth pointing out that the original descent levels contain a lot of tight tunnel spaghetti, which unfortunately does not lend itself too well to six degrees of freedom combat, since you can't really leverage the movement system for dodging incoming fire under those circumstances. For this reason, we decided to design the levels to be more spacious. Secondly, the aesthetics of the levels. Long gone are the days where the levels have severe segment limits, so naturally in OFS the level geometry has considerably increased complexity in order to, amongst other things, make the levels visually more interesting. And finally, certain levels did have some geometry reworked to create a few extra loops and rooms to reduce dead ends and to improve the flow of the levels. Also, due to these levels being created for overload, additional secrets were added and certain overload mechanics were implemented such as lockdowns to accommodate rewarding players with the expanded arsenal and upgrade points. On to the weapon balance tweaks. The most obvious and important tweaks are the ones that alter the pseudo hitscan weapons such as the crusher or the driller cannons. It's worth pointing out that neither descent nor overload actually contain enemies that use true hitscan weapons. Both games do however contain enemies that use weapons which have incredibly fast projectiles and are often referred to as pseudo hitscan weapons. Since in a practical sense they are very close to functioning like actual hitscan weapons. Examples of such enemies would be the class 1 driller from Descent that uses the Vulcan cannon which fires very fast invisible projectiles and the Guardian from Overload that uses the driller cannon. In Overload First Strike there was heavy emphasis on trying to make the game as fair as possible. One of the ways we tried to achieve this was through focus on skill-based movement. Our philosophy is that if the players have good command over the 6th off movement system, they should be able to consistently avoid incoming damage with good evasive maneuvering. As a result, the pseudo hitscan projectile speeds were considerably lowered and the trail was changed to a more visible one to allow for meaningful, consistent counterplay and to reduce frustrating situations that feel like an unavoidable health tax. A special mention here for the Ogre Bot, whose weapon was changed from Flak to the Tweaked Crusher to make it more of a threat from a distance, but still consistently counterable unlike the Vanilla Ogre, who basically deals guaranteed damage with the Flak once the gap has been closed. On to the specific values of the weapon tweaks. First, the Impulse. The projectile speed was slowed from 35 to 30, but the damage to robots was increased from 13 per volley to 15 per volley. The reason behind this change was to lower the power level of goblin variants that were quite oppressive early on. In short, the impulse projectiles are considerably faster than laser projectiles were in descent on lower difficulties. The damage increase versus robots was then added to counteract the reduced velocity to maintain the viability of impulse. It is worth pointing out, however, that as you progress through the game, other energy options do become generally more efficient. The Cyclone has had its projectile speed reduced by 20%, from 75 down to 60, and the basic version has had its projectile life increased by 66%, from 0.3 to 0.5 seconds. The projectile speed reduction brings the Cyclone more in line with the impulse and secondly reduces the frustration in engagements with Hydras. Hydras being a hit and run robot will often end up engaging in very close proximity to the player. Fast projectile fire at very close ranges often ends up being nigh impossible to avoid. The other change, increasing the projectile lifetime, increases the usability of Cyclone without any upgrades. Previously, the Cyclone would start out with very limited usability with its limited range and then gain a massive power spike from the first plus upgrade, which effectively gave it unlimited range. Now the power curve is a bit smoother. The Reflex has had its projectile lifetime increased by 33%, from 1.5 to 2 seconds. 
This was done to accommodate reflex use in generally larger and expanded areas. It was also done to increase the threat level of robots that use the reflex cannon. The bounce mechanic often didn't really pose a persistent threat since the projectiles would expire too quickly, especially in larger areas. The Crusher has had its projectile speed reduced by 50%, from 120 to 130, down to 60 to 65, and its projectile trail changed to a more visible one. The Driller has had its projectile speed cut down by 66%, from 300 down to 100, and like Crusher, the trail was changed to a more visible one. Both the Driller and Crusher were changed in this way for the aforementioned pseudo hitscan reasons. The Flak Cannon is now a player only weapon and has had its damage increased by 20%, from 5 to 6. Has had its projectile lifetime increased by approximately 50%, from 0.1 to 0.11, up to 0.15 to 0.18, and its firing sound changed to a beefier one. All of these changes were implemented to increase the overall power level of FLAC and to make it a more appealing option compared to its main competitor, the Crusher, which in the vanilla version of the game was essentially just a better weapon. The Lancer has had its projectile speed reduced by 50%, from 200 down to 100. This change was done for the aforementioned pseudo hitscan reasons. And finally, the only secondary that was changed is the Creeper Bomb. The initial projectile speed was increased from 13 to 16, up to 15 to 18. This bump in speed was added to accommodate the increased robot ranges and the larger areas so that the Scourge bots would still pose a threat. Additionally, a number of robot-only projectiles have had their projectile lifetimes increased to accommodate the robot AI changes. In Vanilla Overload, robots will not fire upon you if they are past a certain distance away from you. For most bots, this cutoff point is around 30 to 35 units, which can often feel quite unrealistic and even comical. In OFS, the engagement distance has been increased significantly, to the point where, apart from a few specific cases, if the robot has line of sight of you, it will shoot at you. This leads us to the next topic, the general difficulty of the level pack. Our aim was to make it fairly close to the Kronos Frontier in terms of difficulty, which in turn was already easier than the original Descent campaign. The overall difficulty in OFS is actually a bit lower than in the original. For example, if you like playing Descent on the Hotshot difficulty, then bumping it up to Ace in OFS should be quite comparable. One challenge that we faced was trying to ramp up the difficulty quite smoothly over the course of the campaign. It is important to point out, however, that unlike Descent, Overload has an upgrade system where the player can pick and choose what and when to upgrade. Since not all upgrades are created equal, this can lead to a significant variance in the overall difficulty progression of the campaign, depending on which upgrades are chosen, especially early on. Another thing we quite extensively tested and left in was the option to cold start levels like you can in Descent for additional challenge. Unlike the Kronos Frontier, where you're given a considerable arsenal when starting the campaign halfway through, in OFS you start with Impulse plus 10 Falcons, which is the standard overload campaign starting armament. We did however give the player some upgrade points and all the different missile types that have appeared up until that point in the campaign with zero starting quantity when starting halfway through. This makes it so that you can, for example, upgrade your missile pods before the mission, start the mission with zero missile pods, but all the pods that you do find will then be already upgraded. This gives the additional option to do a soft cold start, where you can actually have some upgrades, but with a very limited starting arsenal. If you're really looking for a challenge, I urge you to try playing some of the later levels with a true cold start. That means without upgrades. Next, I want to talk about the music. Descent has a great soundtrack, and a lot of it was a remix for this level pack, mainly by Vertigo Fox. In addition to that, a few original tracks were also made by Vertigo Fox and Saxon Houston, which have been playing on the background. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about some of the non-gameplay related details of this project. Overload First Strike is a non-commercial community project. That means no money was or is going to be involved in the project. Even though we were actually offered donations, we decided against that for a multitude of reasons. OFS has been in the making for about three years. Originally, it started out to me as a summer mapping project back in 2020, with the aim of remaking the first seven shareware levels. The shareware pack was published in September, and by November, unbeknownst to me, Kevin had remade the Mars levels, those being levels 8 through 10. Since at that point we pretty much had 10 levels remade, we decided to go all the way and remake the entire campaign. 
Another question that has come up is about the time it takes to actually make a level. While that of course depends on the level, the number for me is on average probably somewhere between 100 and 200 hours. I once talked to Kevin about this as well and he told me that it usually takes him under 100 hours to make a level. To me that is really impressive considering the complex geometry work he tends to do. Now it is worth mentioning that this number includes more than just going through the motions in the level editor. For me, the vast majority of time is spent thinking about how to go about getting the scale right, how many enemies should be around, how the engagements will play out, making sure that they play out well if there are multiple approaches, entryways to the rooms, playtesting quite extensively, and then reiterating the parts that don't really work all too well. In other words, the tricky part is figuring out what motions to go through rather than actually going through the motions in the editor. Overall, I would like to say that this project, considering the amount of time involved, has been quite the exercise in self-discipline, and I'm very happy to be finally done with it. But most importantly, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to everyone involved with the project. Oval at First Strike would not exist without you. At least, not in its current form. So to wrap this up, I wish you all the best, good luck, have fun, and enjoy Overload First Strike.